The following program is sponsored by the Jelinski Advisory Group, which is solely responsible for its content. Josh Jelinski is the president of Wealth Quarterback, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm located in New Jersey. Registration is not an endorsement of the firm or its representatives by securities regulators, nor is it an indication that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability. Investment advisory services may only be provided to clients in jurisdictions in which the firm and its representatives are appropriately registered or exempt from registration. You should not assume that any discussion or information contained in this broadcast serves as the receipt of or or as a substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor. Different types of investments involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, or product, or any non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this broadcast will be profitable. Equal any corresponding indicated historical performance level or levels be suitable for your portfolio or individual situation or prove successful. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback LLC. Tired of losing money in the stock market roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. We're live on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, New York's WOR, also Clubhouse. We're taking your calls on All Matters Financial. So just pick up the phone, give us a call now, 800-321-0710. If you have a question on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, whatever question you have, no question is a dumb one, except the one that you do not ask. As retirement confidence drops, experts are, say, focusing on these four factors can help, and the IRS is delaying the effective date of an IRA self-correction program, and Jamie Dimon's henchmen swear this 12.5% dividend is good, but is it? House Democrats looking to renew the plan to expand Social Security say the debt ceiling fight hurts seniors the most. Americans' confidence they can live comfortably in retirement has dropped the most since the global financial crisis in 2008. This, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute and Greenwald Research By the time you're about a decade away from retirement, it's a good idea to give some serious thought to your retirement goals. And even if you're 30, 40, 50, just listening, maybe you're in your 20s. Now is the time to start retirement planning. Big government can't save you and won't save you. While you're still working and have time to build up your savings and make other arrangements, even so, no matter where you are in relation to retirement, You can still make progress. It's never too late to start. Having any level of savings is better than no savings at all. So we're taking your calls all hour on this and many topics. But one of the things I pride myself on the radio shows, we take any of your questions live, unscripted, uncensored, shockingly raw, So if you have any financial question, you can type it in the chat box or uh, just call us right now. We're live on New York Radio, 800-321-0710. As one of my dear listener friends says, it's Breakfasts with Josh. One re She wants to change the show. Uh, That's a financial quarterback question of the day. Should we change the financial quarterback radio show title to Breakfasts with Josh? I don't know. I I don't think so. But uh, if you like that, uh, be sure to comment. Give us a call, 800-321-0710. So one reason why retirement confidence has dropped 
is high inflation. And we're going to talk about a new report that says we are in a new bear market. And why I think that is a report destined to fail. One reason is high inflation, which has reduced both workers and retirees' belief that their retirement preparations will sustain them, according to research. Another reason is many feel they do not have enough saved. If you're approaching retirement, the good news is there are still moves you can make to shore up your financial position. If you don't have retirement savings at this point, it's never too late to start. Additionally, other key decisions you will face can help you save money. I'm going to give you four decisions you can make right now to help you save money if you're nearing retirement. Number one, and this goes to if you're trying to save for the future, one, decide where you live. Key deadline to watch, the sooner the better. When it comes to lifestyle, many would prefer to age in place, yet it's important to consider whether your current home will suit you as you age, according to Craig Copeland of the EBRI. When it comes to preparing a strategy for where to live in retirement, the sooner the better. Once you have any mobility issues, you really need to be moving on it. If you plan to relocate, you may want to do it before health issues set in, like maybe go from a two-story colonial to a ranch. Maybe install a ramp in your you know, front yard to get to your house. Make it wheelchair accessible. Maybe install a shower that you could use if you were handicapped in uh, your house in the first floor. Alternatively, if you plan to age where you are, you got to make some upgrades now, such as putting guardrails or handrails on stales, stairs may help smooth the transition if and when your health declines. Here's a big one. Um, and I'm not, you know, 70 years old. I'm not 60. I'm not, I'm not an age where I'm going to age in place. But one of the things I always do is get a first floor bathroom that has a shower that you could kind of walk in if you ever needed it. Also, make sure your trust you could be 35 and married, but is your wife or husband really going to wipe your rear end if you have a significant health setback? You got to think about this. So one of the things uh, we were doing as we were doing estate planning is how do you want to die? How do you want to age? How do you want your money to be used? I don't know about you, but I don't want to go in a nursing home. So one of the things I did was I set up my life insurance living benefits so it could pay for a nurse to live in my home and wipe my bib and take care of me, you know, while I'm with my children and I have money attached to that. They can't send me to my, um, you know, they can't send me to a home. So I have that all set up where if they believe that they can't take care of me, my wife and kids, they got to hire a nurse. And that's part of my estate plan because I don't want to do that. I don't want to go in a nursing home. So sometimes people say, well, I'm not old enough to worry about these things. What about Christopher Reeve? What do you think he planned on getting paralyzed at a young age? What about Michael J. Fox with Parkinson's? So things happen. Health is sometimes, it is your most precious commodity besides your spiritual health. And you could lose all of your wealth planning for your health. So you got to think about these things and have an estate plan, have a trust where your heirs don't get the money. If they ship you off to a home, you can set up all of those things. And you might have one kid who's good with your healthcare decisions and one who's good with the money, separate them because maybe your child who's good with your health. is not that good with money. So you can have a healthcare power of attorney and you can have a financial power of attorney. So, folks, give us a call, 800-321-0710. We're talking about decisions you need to make as you age. One is where to live. A lot of people are moving to Florida and Texas thinking, hey, I am going to solve the state income tax problem, but then they have other problems like home insurance. Or now those real estate markets have gone up dramatically. So maybe you stay where you're at. 
While deciding where to live, people would also be wise to make other provisions for their care, including establishing or updating advance directives, which are legal documents that express your wishes in the event you are no longer able to care for yourself. It's also helpful to create medical records and to have conversations with family members who you want to help in the event you need medical attention. So there is no one-size-fits-all answers, but sometimes just going to your attorney and saying, I need these things, is not enough. You need to think through all of these issues. If you have a financial question or comment about the economy, are we in a new bull market? Markets are up 20% since the October lows. And my big point here is pundits know nothing. Turn off Fox Business, turn off CNBC, I'd say, hey, weren't you on there? Haven't you been a featured guest? Yes. But if you want to do well in retirement, you would do best to turn out the noise. Save 15 to 20% of your income. Make sure you have life insurance equal to 20 times your pay. Disability insurance equal to two-thirds of your pay. Stick to a disciplined savings strategy and really turn out the noise. Tune out the noise because... Barron's, Kiplinger, CNBC, most of them are usually wrong. I remember a YouTube where they did an expose of all of Kramer. No, not uh, Cosmo Kramer. Kramer, the, uh, the stock pundit. And basically they did all these things of if you bought what he recommended you to buy, you would have lost a ton of money in 08. So folks, Uh, Share this with your friends. If you have a financial question, we are taking your calls live all hour at 888, well, 800-321-0710. Get you on with me live right now if you want the free review. Well, we will review your investment holdings from a standpoint of taxes, risk, and interest earned. A lot of you are still stuck at zero. Get off of zero. Start saving money, but also check your bank accounts. Many of your banks are hurting you. If you check your bank account and you see 0.01%, you got a problem. You should be making at least, you know, 4% on your cash right now. If you're not, call us at 888-988-JOSH and we'll help you do that. But a lot of people go, well, Josh, I don't want to change my bank account. I have all my uh, credits and debits coming out of my checking account. Well, yes, you know what you could do? You can link your bank account to a high-yield savings account or a high-yield money market. So as you need money, you can swap it out. So folks, share the room. Tell all your friends about it. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, exchange-traded funds, whatever questions you have, no question is a dumb one except the one that you do not ask. So come on in right now. I would love to get your take on the stock market. Any questions or comments? So there are four decisions you need to make. Where to live is one of them. Also, who and what is going to dictate your health concerns. Create medical records and have conversations with family members who you would want to help in the event you need medical attention. Come up with a Medicare strategy. Key deadline to watch your 65th birthday. While you may start your Social Security as early as 62, eligibility for Medicare doesn't start until 65. An initial enrollment period starts three months before you turn 65, includes your birth month, and goes three months after the month you turn 65 for a total of seven months. So we're live on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Search for Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Now, there's Medicare Part A that covers your inpatient hospital care, skilled nursing facility, nursing home, hospice, home health care, as well as Medicare Part B, which covers diagnostic and preventive care services. 
I'm also throwing it out to the listening audience. Do you believe we are in another bull market? If you want to comment, just type comment in the chat and I will go to you. We are live on Clubhouse, YouTube, Spotify, iHeart. Are we in a bear market? The S&P 500 notched higher for the fourth straight positive week. And many are declaring the bear market over. But a new bull market is more a process than a single moment. You know what? I don't care what they say. If, if the market turns south, they, whoever they is, they're generally people who are not successful with money. They're financial journalists. What they're going to tell you is, okay, 4,300 was the new ceiling. And technically, you know, we are having, um, you know, uh, uh, the Hindenburg omen and all these dumb things. The bottom line is you have to save. You have to be disciplined. You have to make sure you have protection, asset protection strategies, insurance, all of those things. But hey, if you want to comment, do you believe we are in a bear market? Call us 800 321 Zero seven ten. A small portion of people may be automatically enrolled if they are already receiving Social Security benefits. For others, their 65th birthday and the surrounding months that make up their initial enrollment period are a key date to watch. Don't wait until the last week of your initial enrollment period because it's complex. If you're still working and have health care coverage, Through an employer, you may decide you may not want to sign up right away when you turn 65. Those who opt for traditional Medicare may also want to add what's called a Medigap plan, which can help cover out-of-pocket costs or Medicare Part D for prescription drug coverage. Alternatively, many people opt for Medicare C, otherwise known as Medicare Advantage plans, which are offered through private insurance and include Medicare Parts A and B. And if you want help on navigating your Medicare choices, call me now, 888-988-JOSH, and get your free. What do I do with Medicare Review? We offer a Medicare enrollment guide and other resources, such as a free book, to those of you who schedule and keep your no-obligation review. State health insurance assistance programs, known as SHIP, also provide guidance to Medicare beneficiaries. In addition, some people may qualify for financial help through Medicare savings programs if they have income or resources below certain limits. The key is to be proactive and do your research. Certainly, I think six months, four months before your 65th birthday is a great time to start thinking about learning about Medicare and the different choices available out there. Also, when you claim Social Security benefits, that's another key benefit that you need to decide on. Key deadline to watch. By age 60, you should go to the Social Security Administration website and review your statement. Uh, When to claim Social Security, retirement benefits is one of the big questions retirees face. Most experts generally recommend waiting beyond age 62, the earliest eligibility age. At full retirement, 66 to 67, depending on your date of birth, you'll receive 100% of the benefits you earned with no penalties if you're still working. But for every year you delay till 70, you'll get an 8% boost, a guaranteed return that's hard to beat in the markets or elsewhere. It's important to note that these benefits are also inflation adjusted, unlike most other sources of income. So if you have a question, be sure to chime in. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, check if you can save more. Key deadline to watch, 10 years away from retirement. If you're 10 years away from retirement, you should be stacking some serious money for retirement. For many people, the idea of retirement planning doesn't become a reality until age 45. But hey, if you're 35 listening, you should start now. If you're 25 listening, you should start now. Let compound interest be your friend today, not down the road. 
Looks like IRA owners will probably have to wait a while to take advantage of a new program that allows them to self-correct IRA errors that previously couldn't be fixed. In notice 2023-43, the IRS said that self-correction for IRAs can't be used until the IRS issues new rules for the program. And those rules aren't required to be issued until the end of next year, December 2024, whatever the case, the new self-correction program for IRAs won't be effective any soon, anytime soon. This is from IRS, irahelp.com. So folks, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a question, call us now, 800-321-0710. If you have questions on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds. For a number of years, the IRS had, in effect, a procedure. The Employee Plans Compliance Resolution Program that allows employers to fix certain tax code violations made by their retirement plans. The existing Secure 2.0 legislation from last December loosened the plans to make self-correction for plans more widely available that that won't go into effect until December of 2024. Next up, we're going to the phone lines at 800-321-0710. Our first questioner says, Medicare Part C advantage seems very expensive. Better to save up and pay the difference versus paying $800 to $1,200 a month for a couple to have Part C. Well, I, I don't know, but I've I've seen, you know, four or five hundred dollars a month, but that's cheap. If you're spending twelve hundred a month on insurance if, and you're getting older, now maybe you don't want to do Medicare Advantage, but look at to G. I mean, here's the thing. You need a supplemental plan, whether it is G, N, or Medicare Advantage plan. Those are generally the three best options when it comes to Medicare. And as you age, don't you want people to take care of your medical bills? I mean, that's what this is. If you want the risk of taking it yourself, I guess you could do that. Chuck says this in the chat on YouTube. I'm interested in assessing taking Social Security earlier to build up cash. Forgoing the max benefit, bad idea, and waiting until full retirement age. If Congress cuts Social Security up to 23%, it may be better to build cash and invest. Uh, there, there is no plan for Congress to cut Social Security unless, you know, Chris Christie goes in, uh, wins the presidency, which is not going to happen. A lot of these Republican candidates are talking about means testing Social Security, which is kind of dumb. I don't recommend it. But hey, you know, I guess dumber things have happened, right? So give us a call. 800 321 or raise your hand or type your question in the chat. We would love to go to you. So you can correct errors on IRAs now. That's a good bit of news. So um, we're going to talk to you about a lot of things, but I want to hear from you now. So give us a call. So this is pretty interesting. There are these various ETFs that Jamie Dimon and others are launching. Now, I don't know about Jamie, people at his team, which give yields from anywhere from 9.4 to 12.5%. And I want to be clear here that this can be very risky. Uh, So you got to be careful, folks. Make sure uh, you do your homework because these things can blow up be very, very careful of these synthetic products. They've blown up in the past and they can blow up again. House Democrats on Tuesday slammed Republicans for putting Social Security benefits at risk amid an ongoing federal debt ceiling stalemate. 
while also re-upping a plan that aims to tackle Social Security's looming funding shortfall. The tactic of holding the economy hostage hurts seniors the most, says Democrat John Larson, who wanted to reintroduce his legislation, Social Security 2100 Act. The bill calls for making Social Security benefits even more generous by taxing the wealthy. Don't we tax enough already, John? 529 college savings plans took a hit last year. We're going to tell you next how to protect your money from more volatility ahead. And the proposed debt ceiling deal would cut part of the $80 billion in IRS funding. Thanks to vesting schedules, it can take up to six years for workers to really own their 401k. So make sure before you quit, you stay at your job for about six years. When spending too little is the biggest retirement risk. We'll talk about those things when we return. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Tune in to the financial quarterback, Josh Jelinski, this weekend and learn how to protect your financial future in a down economy. Josh and his team at the Jelinski Advisory Group can help you lower your taxes and lower your risk in these uncertain times with a 27-point checklist designed to improve your financial health. Whether you're worried about runaway prices, fear of an upcoming recession, or a stock market meltdown, tune in to the financial quarterback and count on Josh Jelinski to call the play. For a free copy of Josh's book, The Retirement Reality Check, call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Or visit Jelinski.org. That's J-A-L-I-N-S-K-I dot org. Okay, we are back. This is Josh Jelinski. This is your financial quarterback taking your calls on all matters financial 800-321-0710 folks we are live unscripted shockingly raw and i want to welcome you all who are new listeners call us at 888-988-JOSH and i'll give you a copy of my book retirement reality check for free 888-988-JOSH when you schedule and keep your no obligation 27 point ultimate financial game plan Next up, Mike, go ahead. I have a real estate question. I have a commercial property that I have like 10 years left on the mortgage. It adjusts every two years. and It's going to be like 9 10% coming up in two months. I have like 250 left on the mortgage, so I'm curious if I should take that out of my retirement and, uh, you know, take the profits on that end as opposed to paying towards the bank. Yeah, and uh, number one, so you're thinking about taking pre-tax money to pay off post-tax mortgage money? Correct. Bad idea. Do you have any money like cash at the bank earning zero? I'd rather you take money that's after tax to pay down debt. Well, I don't have like the 250000 uh, have? like that, but I have that in my retirement. How much do you have? Uh, probably like around four. 400000 in cash or 4000 in cash? 400 in, uh, in my No, no, retirement. what I'm saying, how much do you have in after post-tax cash? Uh, maybe 35000 Okay, is that like an emergency fund, or do you have more than that in emergencies? Uh, that's like an uh, emergency fund. Okay, I don't like the idea of taking an emergency fund and using that to pay down debt. I don't like the idea of taking pre-tax money and paying down debt, because if you take, let's say, you owe two fifty. And you take 250 out. Well, then that 250 goes on your tax return and would be taxed at your highest marginal bracket. So, what do you show in income tax? Uh, I'm like around 90. 90. Well, what you could do is you could do like bracket filling where you take 50 grand out a year. So, what you could do is you could take, I don't know, 30 from your post tax money. And then 50 from your pre-tax money, you could pay down 80 today and then kind of incrementally take out of the IRAs like 50. Oh, so you're saying suggestion just pick at it a little bit at a time. Exactly. And then use years try to do in like four or five. Exactly. You know. Oh, okay. 
um, if, if that's your chief desire or try to make more money and just plow that in. So if you can get extra hours at work, if you can, you know, live on a little bit less. So if you're making 90 grand a year and you can live off 60, mm -hmm. take 30 of your post-tax income and that's 30, 30, that's 60 and 50. That's 110 right there. So you're almost, you know, halfway there. If you're halfway able to there. do that. Yeah. I mean, but I can also realize, try to increase the rent with the tenants, but I don't know if that'll go over too well with them. <laughs> well, you should. I mean, if if you own real estate, a lot of my real estate, we help many people with real estate wealth. We help many real estate millionaires get a financial plan. A lot of people say, oh, well, I have a good tenant. I'm not going to raise rents with inflation, but you got to index your rents to inflation or else it's not a really good investment. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, and that's probably my, uh, you just hit the nail right on the head because I have good, good tenants and I, you know, I don't want to lose them. But in hindsight, I'm probably hurting myself instead of helping them. I want you and all of our real estate millionaires to listen to this. Let's assume you have a property worth a million dollars. And let's say your rents minus expenses to run the property, property tax, insurance, all of that. Let's say you're clearing 30 grand a year. Now, sure, your tenant is paying all of your bills, but you are netting 3%. That means you're losing to the bank. Right now, you can get 4 or 5% from an annuity company or a bank or a treasury. So you have to be beating, in my opinion, about 4 or 5% a year after expenses for that real estate to be a good deal. Otherwise you should sell it because there's excess liability. Does that make sense? Uh, no, it, it makes total sense. And a lot of real estate people, ah, you know, my, my real estate, I bought it for a hundred grand out with money. Yes. It may have been a great investment 20 years ago, but you always have to evaluate, you know, at least once a year to say, Hey, should I sell this property? Should I keep it? Should I raise my rents? And that's part of why, even if you're real estate rich and sort of stock poor, you need a financial advisor. We'll help you with our special real estate review. Call us at 888-988-JOSH. Any other questions, Mike? No, that, that, that was very helpful. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. But a lot, a lot of people over the years that I've talked to, they take out money out of their IRAs to pay down debt, which is a, which is a worthy goal. But then they don't realize, you know, a year or two later, you paid, you know, you have to do your tax return in April if you did it now. And you don't realize, man, I'm, if you're in like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, California, high tax, tax state, you could be losing 47 cents of every dollar to pay off that 9% loan. So what's better, losing 9% of the bank or 47% of the government? I, I didn't consider that, but that makes uh, total sense. So you might want to like bracket fill, which is if you're making 90, only go up to the next bracket. So similar concept to how people do Roth conversions. So you may might only want to pull out of your IRAs what isn't going to cause penalties and extra taxes. Otherwise, you know, you might be paying some ridiculous rate to the government. People don't realize then they get with a tax bill. They think, oh, I'm just selling my stock. Well, or I'm just uh, taking withdrawals out. Well, you got to be tax smart as well. So call us if you want help with that. 888-988-JOSH. Next up, we have Steve who wants to nudge his cautious aged parents to better investments. Go ahead, Steve. Josh, thanks so much. Always appreciate your, your good, solid uh, advice. So just kind of a general question. My folks had a, bit, a little under a million bucks um, in one of the banks that recently closed or I guess shuttered. And they're nervous now, although the bank was acquired, you know, is there any general good idea for people in their mid to late eighties in terms of the safety of their money, but still earn decent interest? Oh, sure. I mean, if you're listening right now, the big tip is get off of zero. I met with somebody uh, yesterday. They had a, a quarter million dollars in cash earning 0% at a big name bank. And I was trying to tell them, you know, you could make, 5.2% uh, in one-year treasuries. You could make 4.9% uh, in a high-yield money market. And you can, if you don't want to change banks, you just keep 10000 with your bank. 
oh, but Josh, uh, my bank gives me free checking. Well, if your bank, if you have to have 200 grand to get free checking with your bank, uh, you're with the wrong bank. So maybe you want to get a new bank. But if you don't want to change banks, what you can do is you can link your HYSA or high yield savings account or treasury account or brokerage account uh, with your bank account. So there are a lot of ways to get between 4 and 5% right now if you're a senior or if you're just not a senior and you have a bunch of money in cash as an emergency fund. So if you need help, right. call us, okay? 888 Sounds great. I'd love to meet with you. Thanks so much, Josh. And your parents. Okay, next up we have Pat uh, on YouTube and then Paul. Go ahead, Paul. You're on with Josh Jelinski. Yes. The financial. Yes, hello, uh, Josh. Thank you for taking my call. I am calling you um, in regards to my investments that I have in some growth mutual funds. I've held them for many years, and um, over the years, we pay um, capital gains each year on those mutual funds. When I go to redeem, let's say, pull money out of those mutual funds, am I then also going to have to pay? Um, tax, capital gains tax on that again. So for numbers sake, if it was ten dollars a share and now it's worth or and now it's worth a hundred dollars, if I were to pull that out, would I be paying tax on that ninety dollar growth? Uh not if you kept good records. A lot of people think uh okay when I get my ten ninety nine from my brokerage account that shows a ninety thousand gain you know, what happened? Well, number one, it meant you made money. So kudos to you. But number two, all of those dividends that you reinvested over the years increased your cost basis. So make sure you keep good records. If you haven't kept good records, you can go to a website. I don't guarantee its accuracy or validity, but it's called netbasis.com. And you can do a little cost basis reconstruction or hire a CPA who would do the net basis reconstruction for you. So let's say you bought a utility stock in the 80s and 90s, sold it last year. Well, from the 80s and 90s to 2012, those companies generally kept very poor records. And so your brokerage institution is generally only reporting the basis from 2012 to the present. So uh, you don't have to pay gains on money that was reinvested, that was already paid taxes on. So let's say your original investment was 10,000. Your dividends reinvested was 40. Instead of you paying capital gains on 90, you would pay capital gains on 50. Now realize I'm not giving tax and or legal advice, and too many of you redeem things without checking with your accountant or selling things. But, uh, you know, it means you made money. So, you know, sometimes people complain about taxes and it's like, well, don't let the tax tail wag the dog. As Warren Buffett says, if you take a profit, sometimes it's okay to ring the cash register. You know, uh, any other questions on that, Paul? Well, at that point, when I redeem that money, won't I get something at the end of the year from the mutual fund company? Yeah, but how do you know it's accurate? I redeem that that I would handle in, that I would hand to my. Uh, how do you know it's accurate? That I do every year. I wouldn't know it's accurate. Yeah, that's why you should keep records. And uh, I don't know when you started investing, but I would double check to make sure. Hey, I've seen. Uh, Vanguard, Fidelity, Interactive Brokers, all of them, they report what they know. Does that make sense? Yes. That you makes had sense. that money with four other brokerage institutions before it was with them. They are not responsible, nor is your financial advisor for keeping track of your basis. That's your responsibility. Now, there are tools like netbasis.com where you could go and kind of check, and if it if it squares with what you're doing, um, that could be a good answer that maybe that the report you got from them was accurate. Does that okay. make sense, Paul? And uh, we'll Paul, be happy to talk much. to you. 888 josh okay. Give our office a call now. You get a free book, Retirement Reality Check. So call us, 888 josh You get the free book. 
Also, we'll give you his latest Hoisington Investment Management newsletter. And then we have a lot of questions on chats coming in. Pat, David, I'll get to you. Next up, we have Gail. Go ahead, Gail. You're on with Josh Chilinski, the financial quarterback. Yes, hello. Hi, thank you for taking my call. My financial advisor um, passed away, and one of his partners was reviewing uh, my portfolio and also the portfolio that I self-manage. And he is recommending a significant, if not all, going into structured notes. And to be honest, I had never heard of the term structured notes before. So I was uh, wanted to know, uh, <clears throat> are they okay? Are they sound? And what percent of a portfolio should be in structure? That was the phrase he used, structured notes. Structured notes are really like an IOU with the bank. And with all these banks going under, do you really want to trust a bank with a structured note? I mean, I don't know about that. Now, number one, uh, some of these notes can be FDIC insured. So I would make sure if you're playing the structured note game that they are FDIC insured. And don't just take their word for it. Have the literal... You want to see the FDIC number. Does that make sense? Yes. Number two, with treasuries at 5.2%, fixed annuities. You can get a three-year fixed annuity at 4.65 or a five-year at 5%. Why invest in structured notes? You know, when you have institutions like municipalities and treasuries and banks and insurance companies, A-plus rated that have been around, now, we can evaluate those structured notes for you and give you a second opinion. Call us at 888-988-JOSH, okay? But uh, there were a lot of structured notes in the Lehman Brothers uh, days that went under. So you want to be careful when you're buying uh, structured notes. Does that make sense? Yes, but um, but what... But what is it? Like, in other words, equities, I know that they are stocks and companies. Uh, ETFs is a grouping of, of uh, equities. It's an, okay, it's an IOU. So I will look. By the way, we evaluate structured notes all the time. And, you know, they may be right for you. But I'll give you an example if you want. A large bank that you would have heard about is offering, I don't know, I got some... Uh, so we have three. So I looked through uh, with our team that, that kind of evaluates things. There are only three that I see that are FDIC insured. Most of them are not. So what they do is they allow you a percentage of the upside of an index and they promise some level of principal participation. But if you don't understand how they work, you shouldn't invest in them. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do, homework, you know, just to... Yeah, well, even, I'm telling, you, I'm, yes I'm telling no. you that I don't think yeah. generally they're a good thing, and you seem like you want, it, you want to invest in it, so that... No, 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 it, it, it's more, it was a complete unknown for me, um, so I, I wouldn't even know, oh, yeah, this is the best thing, or this is... Uh, no, so, so I'm in that... Well, so uh, I'll give you an example of one. Uh, one well-known bank... Uh, offers what's called a market-linked CD. And the underlying index, I don't want to lose people on the radio either. I so know. <laughs> they pick an index like the S&P 500, okay? If the S&P, so you have to keep your money there for five years. Can't take it out. It's like an annuity. But usually with an annuity, you can take 10% a year out. So on this one that I'm reading that seems pretty good, it's called the Market Link CD. It's not a structured note. Market Link CDs and structured notes often sound the same, but a structured note is not backed by the FDIC. So if the bank goes under, as happened with Lehman Brothers, as happened with Bear Stearns, if you have a note with that company, you lose your entire principal. So they are essentially IOUs from a bank that are not FDIC insured. Am I making more sense now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now you can have ones that are FDIC insured, FDIC insured, and you can have ones that are not. But uh, a good one might work like this. 
You tie your money up for three years, and it will give you 100% of the upside participation in the S&P with no downside if the S&P goes down. But it only depends on what the S&P is from today to three years from now. So if the S&P does good for two years and then does poorly that third year and you're at break even, like kind of what happened the last two years, you would earn nothing for that two to three year period that you tied your money up. Mm-hmm. There are annuities that work like that. They're called indexed annuities. But what I like about an annuity better is you actually have the claims paying ability of an A-plus rated insurance company backing you as the, as a, supposed to just a bank that could go under, a la what happened with Credit Suisse. So, for example, all of the Credit Suisse structured notes, are they backed? Are they not? Nobody knows. Now, they're FD, if they're FDIC insured, at least you have that. So we, we, as I'm looking at them, there are three that I'm seeing that are FDIC insured. The rest are not. And some of them will, will take a basket of stocks. You know, one, for example, is based on the performance of Apple, Amazon, and Tesla. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of strange structured notes. They could be based on various indexes or various stocks. I hope that helps you. And if you yeah. want a review, give us a call. 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. Love to review them with you. David Ranson will be on today at 10 a.m. Lacey Hunt tomorrow at 9. So make sure you're listening. My interview with David Ranson will be very good. We're going to be talking about inflation, recession, all that stuff. You will not want to miss it. We're also taking your calls And we're going to be talking about, are we in a recession or not? Or is it worse than that? Uh, Stay tuned for my interview next. Next up, we have Jeff who wants to know, is diversification really good? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, hi, Josh. I appreciate all the great information you give every week. So my question is, the fact that international stock market rarely does as well as the U.S. stock market. The fact that in the last year and a half, the bond market and the real estate market have done terribly. And the fact that if I put all my money into the S&P 10 years ago, it would have gone up 255% at this point. Is diversification really worsification? I think I've been saying that for years. But I would say diversification is for a smoother ride. Because, you, you know, if you're a retiree, and you don't have kahunas of steel, are you going to be able to withstand a 50% drawdown on your money? So, yeah, I mean, the S&P is generally going to beat a diversified portfolio, but a diversified portfolio uh, might have only lost 8% last year instead of 20. Might have only lost 20% in the COVID 2020 debacle instead of losing 40%. And a lot of people sell everything at exactly the wrong time. Now, I will tell you that one of the things our firm is always looking at is how we can add dimensions. So the 60-40 portfolio or the classic uh, stuff that was bantied about by various radio heads for years of having a bunch of different ETFs without reviewing it is wrong. You know, so what we found as a firm is the international ETFs or international funds that everybody talked about, you needed to have exposure. Um, I mean, big talking heads, talking heads like Edelman or talking heads like Fisher have talked about the MSCI World Index or international index exposure. We found that those indexes add nothing to diversification, but we have found that adding, you know, maybe 5% gold exposure or 5 or 10% energy exposure can sometimes add uh, dimensions of conservatism to a portfolio. Or instead of having a long-dated bond fund, maybe going to short-term treasuries. So although bonds were down last year, if you're with a firm, a fee-based fiduciary firm that's actively looking at it, they can make decisions such as, hey, let's get out of these long bond funds and let's go to shorter duration funds. So I think diversification as traditionally practiced is diversification. 
but I think there's a way to do it uh, properly. Does that make sense, Jeff? Yes, it does. You know, but Thank a lot of people can't stomach putting all their money in the S&P. If you can, kudos to you. And, uh, you know, God bless you. But a lot of people can't take that 40% drop. I mean, imagine you having $3 million at the start of last year. And then in the low, you had, you know, $1.8 million. What are you going to do? You're retired. You just lost $1.2 million. You start thinking, man, am I going to go on the bread lines pretty soon? We, we talked to people like that last year, and diversification helped them not vomit out your portfolio. The best portfolio you can have is the one that you do not sell when the market goes down. So you have to kind of know yourself. Does that make sense? It does, but, but actually in the last year, I think the real estate market and the bonds have done worse than the... Um S&P. No, not at all. That was last year with certain long-dated bonds. I mean, you could buy short-term treasuries right now. They're paying 5.2, not losing anything. So uh, it depends on your bond managers. You're, what you're talking about is bond funds. Yeah, bond index funds. Uh, you may want to rethink those. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelinski Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback LLC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Wealth Quarterback website at Jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature, is provided for informational purposes only, and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC.